time. And this, um, like I said, this fish is used in a lot of stews, a lot of gravies, but these are thick gravies, thick gravies that go like on top of rice, etc. So this is a heavily vegetable stew. The veggies that I'm using are green peppers, fresh tomatoes, carrots, mushroom, cilantro, onions, garlic, banana peppers, but you can use whatever type of veggies that you want to use for your stew. Spinach will go nice in it. Kale will go nice in it. After you have let the fish soak for eight hours, it's gonna start to break apart. Don't worry about that. It's, that's what it's supposed to do. So I'm using the grill today. I hope y'all can see it. I may have to take it off. But I'm gonna put some oil in this first. And you can saute this at home or you can use the grill for another dimension of flavor. Um, I'm gonna put my vegetables into the pan. And basically you want the vegetables to saute. Now I'm using a habanero pepper. I talk a lot about the jalapeno pepper where if you don't want the spice, you can de-seed the pepper to be left with the flavor. So with the jalapeno, if you don't want the dish to be very spicy, leave it whole and then halfway through cooking, you're gonna take it out because with peppers, it develops its flavor, it gets spicier the longer that it cooks. So let me let y'all see how this pot looks. Hopefully y'all can see it. Can everybody see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's like I said, it's heavily into the vegetables. You would just let whatever veggies you choose, you would just let them saute, get to know each other. It's best to use fresh vegetables for this stew. I feel like it provides more flavor, but once again, you're gonna use what's in your house. Add a little water to get the cooking process started. Now, when your vegetables start to break down, you know, when they start to soften, when your onions turn clear, I have carrots in there, so when they start to soften, that is when you're going to add your salted cod. And like I said, you want it to break apart. It's going to break apart because it's like a stew, if you will. And it's delicious. It gives it a fish flavor. It's not salty anymore after mm. you have soaked it for eight hours. It tastes like, um, if you're familiar with the taste of cod, it tastes like cod. It has a nice chewy texture, a nice firm texture. And you just, now what you don't want to do, excuse me, is you don't want to add a lot of salt. Even though the fish is not salty, it may sound strange, it's just enough salt in the fish, but it's not salty. So don't add any more salt, if that makes sense. So you yes. let it cook. It's gonna produce its own juices. Let me show you what the final product looks like. Excuse my table. This is how it looks stewed down. Mm. And it's actually really delicious. A lot of different cultures use this. And you would just put it over some rice and serve it family style or however you choose. And it's a really great, healthy, affordable seafood stew. Uh, my homegirl from Guyana, her family makes this all the time and it's really, really delicious. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a Jamaican friend and I thought the she made some and I thought I didn't try any because I my in my mind I thought it was salty. It would be salty. No, it, it's it's yeah, it's not gonna be so I'm upside down, y'all. I'm sorry. It's not gonna be salty once you soak it and right. start cooking and it's just the name is just saltfish because of the method in which it was preserved, but it's not gonna be salty. Right. I, I like that. Okay, yeah. the um uh, herbs, I mean the green peppers, fresh tomatoes, carrots, garlic, banana peppers, kale if you want, hot peppers. Uh, there was any other ingredients? Yes, I used a little bit of cilantro. I'm not sure if I said that. And I used a little bit of mushroom <laughs> okay. to add some earthiness to the stew. Okay. Thank you. How long do you cook? How long do you cook it? Um, you're going to cook it. There's no really set time. It depends on how you want your vegetables to taste. If you want yeah. a bite or a crunch in your vegetable, you will cook it shorter. 
if you want your vegetables to be a little softer, you will cook it longer, if that makes okay. sense. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all I have today, Chef. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So today I will be doing um, salmon and potato cakes mm. and fried green tomatoes mm. and mm. fried squash. Wow. Fried squash. So for your salmon, I have two cans of salmon in here. I don't take the juice out for this one and I don't take the bones out because the bones are soft. I just crush them up as I'm mixing it up. Um, so I have in here, like I said, two cans of salmon. I have one egg. Um, my seasonings, I use black pepper. I know I like Mrs. Dash, onion powder, garlic powder, a little ranch powder a little um, teaspoon of hot sauce, about a half a cup of flour, but that variates depending on how firm you want them. Um, I chopped up some onion, bell pepper, and garlic. And then I just made some potatoes out of dehydrated potatoes, but you can also boil regular potatoes, peel them, mash them up, and add them to this. For two cans, I would only add two potatoes about your average size. And last but not least, breadcrumbs. And for my breadcrumbs, I just crushed up some um, garlic herb croutons. And um, the last ingredient is cream cheese. So I mixed all of that up. And this is what two cans in the wow. right ingredients did. So it stretches. That's why I said two started just with two cans. OK, I see. So. You're going to need, of course, your grease, and this is vegetable oil, soy oil, sorry. Um, my breadcrumbs, I have flour, and I have some eggs. I also have, yes? Excuse me, I have a question. Did you drain your salmon, or you just used the No, no okay. not for this recipe. I didn't drain anything. Okay. But, I mean, if you choose to, you can. I just didn't. I like, I wanted to get all the flavors, the bones, the juice. Everything. I also have some Zatarans um, breading. You can find this in your local grocery store. But the Zatarans breading is going to be for our fried green tomatoes and our squash. So we're going to get started. Our grease is hot. Um, now, if you want to, you can put this in the freezer for a little while um, to firm up some more if you want. And I'm not making these big. I'm making these kind of like bite size, maybe about that big. So you want to get it in your egg wash first. I mean, in your flour first, sorry, and then your egg wash. Get that back there, sorry. Flour, then egg, and then croutons. So your bread crumb. And the size of what you want to do, that's up to you. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs. And typically, I would change my gloves in between because I just don't like your gloves will get or your hands will get real gunked up. So typically I would do that, but you don't have to. And we just want them to fry to their golden brown. I have enough oil in here where it's almost covering up the top of them, if you can see. So we're going to let that cook down. And then we can bread our tomatoes and our squash. So my, my tomatoes, I like to toss them in some hot sauce and Mrs. Dash, and I let that marinate for about an hour. This is just what me and my family do. 
You don't have to do it. I'm so sorry. Mrs. Um, Dan. And you can season your squash, even though you don't have to do it that much because the Zataran seasoning is already seasoned. And y'all don't know, I was thinking about this all day yesterday. I was so hungry just to eat this today. <laughs> so I really want some green tomatoes and squash and salmon. I'm gonna turn these over now. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna be good and crunchy on the outside because we did the three layer method and they're gonna be nice and creamy on the inside. Now I did do a sauce. So for the sauce, you'll need one cup of mayo, a squeeze of lemon juice, and a, about a teaspoon and a half of Cajun seasoning. Mix that up and that's gonna be the sauce for the tomatoes and the salmon. It can go both ways. And for the tomatoes and the squash, you can do the three method if you want. That's up to you, but you don't have to. I just go straight in. But make sure you pat it in there good. So, did anybody do anything interesting this weekend? I did. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my aunties, we went to an escape room. Um, it was like an Egyptian escape room. It was so much fun. I'm telling you, the puzzles were so hard. Like we were in one room, they only give you an hour. We were in one room so long, we didn't even know it was a secret passage to the other, to the wall to get through the other room to get to the tomb. But we didn't finish, we ran out of time, but the host said we did a really good job, we just need a little more time. So we're gonna go back, because we never got to see what was inside of the tomb. It was just a very good Sunday yesterday. Spent a quality time with my aunts like we do. We had a good conversation. We went out to eat at, um, I don't know if y'all heard of the Casey's, but it's a soul, a soul food kind of buffet. And don't worry, they had everything screened off and they had plastic sheets in between each table and there was only like five people in there. So our mm -hmm. salmon patties are ready. I'll see they're nice and golden. We're gonna let those drain and then we'll plate them. Now we're gonna go ahead and fry our tomatoes and our squash. Oh, then after that, we always go to um, Goodwill or a thrift store. And so one of our future outings, we're going to be dressing up in prom dresses, getting a limo, we're gonna ride around the town and just have a, a ball. But while we were in Goodwill yesterday, this little sweet little Mexican girl named Allison, she didn't even work there, but for some reason she catered to us and she helped all three of us find dresses. Yep. On a beautiful Davis bridal gown, black, um, for six ninety nine. Mm hmm And we all found dresses, so I'm going to, of course, I'll let y'all know when we do that and show y'all pictures. Um, but at Casey's, they had fried green tomatoes, but they were soggy, and we don't do soggy. Right. So we're going to let those cook till they're going brown, and you can go with on with your squash. And you can do this with zucchini, eggplant. Preferably with eggplant, you probably would do the three-way method with the breadcrumbs, because you're probably going to be putting a sauce with that, a tomato-based sauce. And everybody likes green tomatoes, squash, and salmon? Is something yes. Like? I yeah. don't care for green tomatoes. Okay. Oh, and um, I don't know 
Miss Buffy on here, but she shouted me out because she said my strawberry brownies were so delicious. Uh, from the breast cancer. Yes, program. she did this one. From the breast cancer program. <laughs> oh, and then we also, me and my aunt went to a new ice cream place. It was called the Bubble or something. But they serve your ice creams. Um, they have regular cones and stuff too, but they serve it in a bubble waffle. The waffle is shaped into bubbles. And they serve your ice cream in that. Wow. Yeah, that, that was good. You all ate real ate the ice cream real good. <laughs> yeah, and the ice cream the girl makes from scratch. And it's delicious. Um, where was that at, Auntie? That was on La Vista Road, right? Okay. Um, not far from um Casey's. You know, between the Goodwill and Casey's, you know, okay. shopping plant. So I've cut up some lemon wedges and some green onion. This is going to go on our presentation. Our um, tomatoes are still frying up. I want them to be a little more golden brown. And before I um, take add anything else, because you know the more you add to your grease the longer it takes everything to cook. And so I'm going to let those continue to get golden. And you can do the same recipe with canned tuna. Uh, what's the other? Mm -hmm. uh, the mackerel. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, Cher. Yes. OK, well, with, the, with this potato, you say this is called salmon potato cake. Yes, ma'am. And, and you put the you grated the potatoes and put them in. Was it inside the inside the salmon? Is that what you Yes, ma'am. I drank the. I, I poured the juice, two mm -hmm. cans of salmon in here, juice, bones, everything, and mushed that up. Then I seasoned it with Miss Dash garlic and onion powder, a little hot mm -hmm. sauce, flour, um, onions, bell peppers, and garlic chopped up. I added flour and breadcrumbs and cream cheese and the uh, mashed potatoes. Okay. Oh, 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 like I said, you can do the, the dehydrated potatoes and make them up, season them to like you want, then add them, or you can boil you some potatoes and peel them, mash them, do the same thing, and then add them. Okay, that's what I missed, the potato, you did the potatoes. Okay, and the cream mm -hmm. cheese? You... Okay. Yeah, I put the cream cheese in there cold and I just worked it until it all okay. um, wasn't wow. out lumps anymore. Oh, okay. Okay, because I missed the potato part. That's okay. Yeah. Was it one package of cream cheese? Um, no, I only use a third. A third okay. of the package. You don't need the whole thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Yes, it does. It's just something different than, you know, just a regular salmon patty, even though regular salmon patties are delicious. But this is just something different that you could do. And you don't have to shake these in the patties. You could do balls. That's why I said, you shake them in the balls, I would put them in the freezer for about 30 minutes till they firm up some more. Oh, okay. um, or you could do whatever shape you want, really. What batter are you using for the fried green tomatoes, even though I don't care for them? I mean, I'm using Zatarans. You're using the Zatarans. Okay. Zatarans, correct. Now, a lot of people just use straight up flour or cornmeal. Um, I don't always like the greediness with the cornmeal. Um, so I found that Zatarans, it does just as good. And it's already yeah. flavored. So it's uh, just a little bonus. So we're going to take our tomatoes off. Zatarans yeah. has sodium in it. Um, yes, but I'm not using a whole lot. It's it's seasoned, but I'm not it's not a whole lot of sodium. You don't have to use so much. So don't forget to let your tomatoes drain. You know, as you go. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our squash. So 
So you just sliced up your squash and just put it in the Zataran batter? I seasoned it a little bit with the Mrs. Dash and then I just coated it with the Zataran. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> But like I said, again, you can do the three-way method if you choose. It's going to do the same thing. But this is just a simpler way. Now, for our plate setup, I have our Cajun mayo, which I told you the recipe for. Anybody need me to repeat that? I'll put, you say yes? Yeah, yeah for, this, for, this, for the sauce? Yes, it's a cup of mayo. Yeah. Um, a squeeze of lemon juice and a mm -hmm. teaspoon and a half of Cajun seasoning. Okay. Okay. So you're using that sauce for everything you've cooked today? Yes, it's all purpose sauce. Now the scrunch, I know you sliced it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, slice it like any kind of way you want, circular. Or... Yeah, you can. You can do it long way, oblong. You can do it circular. I just did circles today. Okay. <coughs> and you know, your lemon juice is for garnish, and you can also squeeze that on your sandwich. So what would you serve that with your uh, veggies? I mean, just what would you serve your, your squash with? Just any oh, kind of. Oh, this is your meal right here. Oh, okay. our salmon cakes, our fried green tomatoes, and our squash. As soon as they get done, I'm gonna show you this finished. Okay. Complete plate. Um, this is fried stuff, but you're allowed to have fried stuff every once in a while, and it is veggies. And salmon is healthy for you already, so it's not that bad. And if you don't want to fry in soy oil, you can fry in coconut oil or whatever you choose. Soy oil is good to this vegetable, so we still in a healthy realm today. Did you mix any of your breadcrumb in the salmon mix? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. I mix breadcrumbs and breadcrumbs and flour. Okay. Oh, okay. That was my question also. Sure was. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and those breadcrumbs I told you were just um I crushed up some garlic herb crouton. Oh, okay. That's the easier way if you don't want to go all the way from scratch. I got good grease, so it's just uh, taking a little longer to brown, but they are almost done. Oh, I can email you for the recipe, right? Yes, ma'am. Of course. And I will get the, I always get the firmest green tomatoes. I like them hard because yeah. they're going to get fried, so you don't want them to already be too soft, and then they'll be mushy. The firmer they are, the better they are for frying. And the hot sauce is just something we do. It's just a flavor addition. Any more questions right now? Yes, in culinary school for um, a garnish or presentation, you know, I'll use, like I, I know you said, uh, lemon wedges and uh, something else, but. I got green onions. Green onions, okay. So in different dishes, you all use, you, you all were taught how to, you, what to choose as far as garnish? Yes, and really any vegetable can be used for a garnish. We had a course um, in school where we did carvings. Uh, 
you learn how to carve a strawberry into a rose or carrots or radishes or um, pretty much anything, fruit, apples, pears, anything you can make into a garnish. Okay. And I, I do also know how to ice sculpture. I just don't get paid enough for that. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> because that's a lot. Like in color, now, we, you know, you're able to use chainsaws and different things like that. But in culinary school, they had us outside in the heat with just a small chisel. And you had to shape whatever they gave you. I think I had a dolphin or something. So we had to be out there all day, chipped up, bleeding and everything from the ice, uh -huh. making that sculpture. And like I told you, one of my culinary friends, he's always on um, Food Network because he wins. He's in a lot of those challenges and stuff. And he carves pumpkins, ice, and everything. His name is Stephen Bailey. You can look him up. That's one of my culinary brothers. All right, our squash is done. You now can make a lot of money on the ships doing that, Destiny. You said what? You can make a lot of money on the ships ships doing that carving, that um, ice Oh, yeah, yeah. You really can. So I'm going to let those drain. They look delicious. And then we're going to add them to our plate. So we're done, and this is what our plate looks like. Ooh, we have our uh, beautiful fried green tomatoes, our salmon potato cakes, or croquettes, or whatever you want to call them, and our fried squash, perfectly golden brown. You want to have good grease. I hate bad grease or old grease. With our Cajun mayo. And there you have it. Looks Thank wonderful. you. Looks good. Oh, that is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you take pictures of your dishes? Yes, I do. And if you were on Facebook, you would see them. I know. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes, I do take pictures of all my food. And I do a, a short Zoom video on Facebook showcasing uh, what I make every day. Um, some of my seniors on here are my friends on Facebook, so they they do see it. Uh, shout out to Miss Cheryl. She was craving some of my watermelon um, lemonade over the weekend, and she shouted me out on Facebook. She's always been a great supporter. All of you are, um, but I just know everybody's not on Facebook. I haven't stepped over into the the Instagram yet, that's a lot. It took me a lot to get on Facebook. So, um, but I am, I'm working on some things, books, stuff like that. So y'all just keep on supporting me and we appreciate it. Um, it's just such a blessing to do this and still be able to have a job during these times. And that y'all in the class and our classes are growing. We got, uh, it was up to 14 today. So that's great. Um, any questions for us before we get out of here? Tomorrow we'll be doing, um, I'm doing all chicken. We'll go over to all the parts of the chicken um, on Thursday in our informational class, but tomorrow I will be doing some chicken uh, recipes, some new and some old. Uh, and don't forget uh, our next event is the Fall Masquerade. 
Festival and Pumpkin Decorating Contest hosted by Darnell, uh, October 30th, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And right after that will be a cooking demonstration from me and Chef Aja with some spooky treats. Um, of course, dress up, wear a costume or a mask. We'll be having line dancing. We're gonna have a good old time as usual. And if there's no more questions, everybody got my email address if you want the recipes destiny.moss at fultoncountyga.gov and we will see your beautiful faces manana thank y'all so much thank you thank you thank you chef good job thank you everybody have a good day thank you